Hello, greetings, and welcome to another Coast Guard Academy admissions partner webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about campus programs. So all of those programs around campus that bring uh, nearly 10,000 annual visitors uh, to our academy uh, to experience what cadet life is like and to learn more about the opportunities for cadets and officers and careers in the U.S. Coast Guard. So let's get started. We're going to touch on our campus map and virtual tour experience that can be accessed online. We'll touch on some of our programs. Um, one question that came up when some of our volunteers were attending the Parents Weekend event was uh, in, in questions and information on the Educator and Influencer Summit held in the spring here where we invite counselors to campus. There'll be more on that in just a little bit. And then opportunities for our volunteers to come to campus to meet me, to see the admissions staff and the admissions office, uh, to experience uh, campus life and see all the great things that CGA has to offer. We'll touch on some of those opportunities that occur throughout the year um, at the end of the presentation before some time for Q&A. So thank you very much for being here today and uh, we'll roll right into it. So this is the campus map here, uh, the Coast Guard Academy located in New London, Connecticut. Um, so for those that are coming from far away, there are a couple things to expect when you do come to campus. Um, one is that it is a military base, but it is also a school and is open to the public as long as you have a valid driver's license um, or form of identification. So uh, you're welcome to drive on base at any time as long as you have one of those uh, forms of identification. Uh, parking is readily marked and easily accessible um, around campus. Uh, we are wheel, a wheelchair friendly, um, disability friendly campus as far as getting around. Um, although it is Connecticut, there are lots of hills, so be prepared for that. Bring your walking shoes. Um, the campus is also divided into sort of upper campus and lower campus and spans a total of 100 acres. Uh, lower campus is to the east along the Thames River and has much of our waterfront facilities, um, athletic facilities, our rowing center is down there as well. Um, you do have to sort of drive and snake through campus to make it down to the lower uh, facilities, but it is easy to find once you are on board. Um, as far as upper campus though, that is where all of our academic buildings, the admissions office and library, uh, Coast Guard Academy Exchange, our Performing Arts Center, and of course, Chase Hall, uh, the cadet barracks is located as well. So, yeah, um, it's a relatively easy campus to navigate. Um, absolutely beautiful around this time of year when the leaves are changing. Um, change of seasons in Connecticut is a wonderful time to visit and highly recommended. Uh, in the wintertime, weather is always a factor with winter weather in the Connecticut area. And in the summertime, uh, most of the students are away um, for training experiences uh, if it's not swab summer. And uh, the AIM experience is going on in July as well. So the campus is busy, um, but shuts down usually around June and around the holidays, it gets very quiet. It remains open to visitors if you'd like to come and visit, uh, but it does, get, it does get quiet around campus around those times of year. Uh, the campus uh, is still open on federal holidays. However, all of the offices, including the admissions office, are typically closed for all federal holidays. So that is a uh, brief uh, overview of our campus and the layout of our campus. Highly recommend uh, coming to see it. Uh, lots of great improvements happening every single day. Uh, for instance, our waterfront facility just underwent a, a big renovation and we are in the process of breaking ground on our new um, Maritime Center of Excellence, the MOCE and uh, our football field and our new Jumbotron projector, uh, a picture of which was in the last newsletter for volunteers, um, is also something new on campus. Our new cyber securities lab is new on campus and was featured in one of my previous webinars about the electrical engineering and cyber systems major. Um, so there's lots of great things to see uh, and do if you were to come and visit. And it's uh, conveniently located in New London near public transportation close to Mystic, Connecticut, Niantic, Connecticut, so highly recommend coming for a visit. If you are not able to come for a visit, and for some students who do need financial assistance, we do offer financial assistance uh, aid for those with needs, uh, so they have to put in a request to our office uh, for those, and we'll touch on that again in a little bit. But if you are not able to physically be here, you can at least virtually visit uh, through our virtual experience found on our website at uscga.edu backslash visit, excuse me, 
Click on the uh, Start Virtual Experience and you will find two different sections to explore. That's Coast Guard Academy and Coast Guard Careers. Um, very informative, very helpful, and a great way to go around, see campus, and see what life in the Coast Guard is like after graduation. So highly recommend to check those experiences out as well. We'll get right into our day program. So uh, most commonly uh, seen in on college admissions uh, uh, dockets are the brief and tour that you will find at most colleges. Uh, we are lucky that we get to have cadets come and provide tours to parents when the cadets are here and available. Um, so the cadets do get 70 days of leave a year. Uh, there is a chance that they will not be on campus and it's most common that that occurs around the holidays and early summer around June. Uh, but for the most part, cadets should be here and available to assist. Those briefs and tours are held most Mondays, now on Wednesdays as well, Fridays and some Saturdays. On the weekday events, that's typically an afternoon event that happens around one o'clock or 1300 Eastern Standard Time. And the weekend events happen sometime in the early to mid morning, um, typically from a 0900 to 1000 or 1100 session. So uh, those are great to come meet admission staff, hear an admissions presentation, uh, hear from cadets when available, and then take a tour of campus. Uh, if the cadets are not available, there is a walking tour feature. Uh, there are pamphlets here in the admissions office to receive information on that walking tour, but you can also download the Coast Guard Academy app. And that application uh, has a virtual walking tour experience that will, uh, when, share, when you share your location with it, will tell you what building you're in front of, all the history about that building and the purpose it serves on our campus. So it's a great feature. The other program uh, that we would highly recommend looking into is the Bears Day event. Bears Day is for all ages. Uh, there is no age limit for that event. So uh, middle school students through freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, I highly recommend it for sophomores and, and juniors to look into attending. Um, those events are held and they are day long. Uh, they are held throughout the fall, winter, and spring semester. Uh, they allow the student to get an admissions presentation, but then also be paired up with a cadet host uh, and experience what classes, what lunch in the wardroom in Chase Hall is like, and what life within the barracks is like as well. So it gives a great overview for a day of cadet programs and for those parents and families that can't commit for an overnight um, or are looking for an experience earlier in the student's uh, high school career, the Bears Day experience is a wonderful thing to look into. The Science Technology Engineering Program, or STEP, is specifically designed to expose uh, women and minority students to education opportunities in higher education, specifically in regards to science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, so what we do is we design a day-long program where we bring in students primarily from the regional area because it is a smaller program. Uh, to work alongside our engineering faculty and meet them. Uh, they perform an engineering project that day that typically involves soldering and uh, electrical engineering and a little bit of mechanical engineering. Uh, they learn about all the different academic majors here at CGA that are STEM related and then get to meet with admission staff as well. So those are great, great opportunities, highly recommended. Um, and we also pair up those groups with both our Genesis Council and with our women, uh, our women engineering uh, councils as well here on campus. So we get our cadets heavily involved uh, to mentor those students throughout the day. Um, and a lot of these relationships that are developed with students and cadets, uh, professionally speaking here at the Academy, during these visits continue on the social media platforms and these students will stay in touch uh, to help the, uh, the applicant out along the way and to make sure that they have all their questions answered as they learn more about their coast, future Coast Guard career and potentially attending the Academy. Um, so for day programs, it's important to note that we do not offer the physical fitness exam for these programs and that interviews are not often scheduled during these visits just because of the time restraints and the uh, resource re restraints placed on um, our staff. Uh, our staff is often um, working alongside the parents uh, throughout these visits. Uh, we have uh, uh, 
a schedule that's also designed for the families who attend with the student. So when the student goes off and does their schedule, uh, the parents and families are also invited uh, to attend lunch with the admissions staff, ask one-on-one -on -one questions, get more information there. Um, and then per, they are also provided with their own cadet tour and cadet information session as well. Overnight programs, uh, these are designed uh, nearly, nearly exclusively for high school seniors and um, kind of junior college uh, students as well. Although we do have one that's designed for high school juniors and that's during the academic year in the spring. It is our spring overnight for junior athletes. Uh, that, is, uh, that is by invite only from our athletic staff. Uh, so students interested in attending will oftentimes hear from the coaches whether or not they receive that invitation to attend early on in their junior career of high school. The Cadet for Day experience is held several times throughout the year. It is a first come first serve registration and oftentimes is first made available to those students who apply to the academy introduction mission but were not appointed. So there are a few uh, days of grace period given to those students to come in, register for these events, uh, sign up and attend, and then it opens up to the public. Each of these events can host about 50 students for an overnight program, 50 to 60 students, depending upon the number of uh, the available space in the barracks. Um, and there are both recruited and non-recruited athlete experiences for Cadet for a Day. We do offer for overnight programs the physical fitness exam um, experience, and that occurs in the morning of the second day of the program. So they've slept in Chase Hall, they wake up, and then they go and they run the PFE after breakfast. So that's a great experience. That gives you a good overview of what 70 to 80% of your Cadet experience here at CGA will be like. Uh, whereas the um, the day program may be a little less because you don't get to see kind of like that evening night sessions in Chase Hall and, and what the barracks is like after the class day. Um, and then uh, a little bit different than the Academy Introduction Mission because that focuses more on Swab Summer and Boot Camp. The Genesis Invitational is another overnight program specifically uh, designed for underrepresented students and first generation college bound students. Uh, we also offer an opportunity for those uh, families to come and participate with the students uh, throughout the day, meet admissions staff, and then get uh, information sessions with the Dean uh, of Academics, with the Director of Athletics, with our uh, religious, musical, and um, all different programs on campus, including Cadet uh, Resources and Cadet Life and Chase Hall, so that the entire family is brought into the decision-making process with the student. Um, and again, there are scholarship opportunities available. Oftentimes, though, if a student was already already granted one scholarship for, let's say, like the AIM program, the Academy Introduction Mission, uh, a second scholarship will not be granted to that student. So um, they have to be kind of uh, careful on how they plan out their uh, visits and uh, how they're using their financial aid throughout their applicant experience. And again, the physical fitness exam is offered for Genesis. So that covered overnight and day-long programs here at CGA throughout the academic year. One of our largest officer recruiting initiatives in the Coast Guard is the Academy Introduction Mission. It is for juniors to apply to and attend during their rising senior summer. The application for AIM opens between February and April and selections are made by the 1st of May. There are basic academic qualifications, basic medical qualifications, and we do require one letter of recommendation and responses to some short answers. Uh, the application itself will look somewhat similar to the Coast Guard Academy application, and it is recommended that students take that application seriously and treat it as if it were their actual Coast Guard Academy application. So it's a, and the reason why is because we do receive around 2,000 annual applicants for the AIM program. And that fills about 600 spots in AIM. Uh, participants will attend one of three week, uh, one of three weeks. So there's a one week session, three weeks total in July of the rising senior summer, uh, where they'll perform engineering projects, sailing, um, Coast Guard asset tours, have a swap summer experience. Uh, they'll go through a college fit training. They'll have academics uh, trainings. They'll uh, see all sorts of cadet life and really focus down on what kind of the swab summer 
experience and indoctrination feels like and looks like. Um, if the school year is 75, 80% of their experience here as cadets, swab summer is seven weeks out of a 200 week training experience. Therefore, it is an example of what 3% of your cadet experience will be like. It is not necessary for you to attend AIM to get into the Coast Guard Academy, um, but though we have about 75% of those who do attend AIM apply, and AIM participants typically account for about 40% of the incoming class, and we get around 2,100 applications each year for the incoming direct entry class to the Coast Guard Academy. So it's important to kind of consider these numbers, um, but not take it too much, too personally. If we aren't able to offer you an appointment to the AIM program, uh, we have to turn away lots of great high quality candidates every single year for this program. And we do wanna see them again, apply to the Coast Guard Academy. Um, students who attend AIM are evaluated on their performance and not everyone who attends AIM applies, not everyone who attend, attends AIM uh, gets into the Coast Guard Academy, and not everyone appointed to the Coast Guard Academy went to the AIM program. So that's very important to remember for students and families as they're continuing through uh, their application cycle, no matter where they are uh, in their junior year, senior summer, or getting into their senior year. And that's the AIM program. Uh, as far as support for this program, uh, it is about a half a million dollar project. Uh, we do charge a tuition for students to attend. Um, that tuition can be waived based on a request for scholarship, and that tuition is typically $550 to $600. Um, the support behind the scenes logistically includes 16 admissions partner volunteers, um, about 12 admissions staff members, and uh, 40 to 50 Academy cadets. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts to make this program successful. Uh, we also have a full medical staff regiment that comes and assists as well. Uh, so it takes a whole village uh, to run the AIM program, and it really is a fantastic opportunity. For many students, it is the solidifying reason why they choose the Coast Guard Academy over any other academy and why they want to make the Coast Guard their career. So getting into the Educator and Influence, Influencer Summit, um, as we kind of edge toward the end of, uh, end of today's presentation, um, this is a spring summit held at the Coast Guard Academy, typically in March, where we invite educators, influencers, and congressional staff um, to participate in a two-day program. We limit it to about 50 participants each year, and we limit it also to one educator per school. Sometimes we'll get a request from a, a, a school in Hawaii that wants to send uh, five or six of its educators here at the same time. Um, and just kind of keeping in mind the need to spread out financial resources in our office, uh, we do try to limit it to one educator per school. So um, it is a wonderful opportunity for them to come here to the Academy for us to get them in front of all sorts of guests um, here for as far as admissions, the dean, athletics, the music department, cadet resources, and meet cadets themselves, spend time with admissions, and then we get to turn them into force multipliers for the Coast Guard Academy. Um, so all of our guests are put on government orders, so the cost of travel, lodging, and per diem is covered. Um, so keep that in mind uh, when you are out there speaking with educators about this opportunity, that we certainly can pay for their experience to get here, uh, and make sure that it is worthwhile to them. Um, I really like this program for developing force multipliers. Um, if you know we get to speak to one student in a school, that's great, but eventually that student will leave that school and we will not have a presence there again. Um, but if we get to uh, talk to a guidance counselor, then what will happen is that person may be there for many years and they get to identify additional talent for the Coast Guard and Coast Guard Academy. As far as partner visit opportunities, uh, drop-ins are always welcome here in this office. I always want to see people stop in, say hi, meet admission staff, meet me. Um, the AIM program, what we're going to be doing this winter is developing a new uh, selection, um, training, and criteria for the AIM program partner participation. So stand by to learn more about that coming up. Um, I've been working hand-in-hand -hand with our AIM coordinators 
uh, the Johnsons and uh, making sure that I have input and buy-in from all of those volunteers who have been participating for many years. Um, but we do want to work on and develop the sustainability of the AIM volunteer program and ensure that there's a way for new participants to be involved and to develop their uh, skills and leadership abilities to move up the ranks of leadership and responsibility in AIM um, so we can offer the opportunity to more and more of our volunteers. Parents Weekend is another great opportunity to stop in the admissions office um, that's typically in September or October. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll host an admissions workshop for parents uh, who are interested in becoming volunteers and parents who are volunteers uh, to come and get updated on all things admissions. Homecoming is another great opportunity for alumni and active duty to stop in, see the admissions staff, say hi. Um, I also uh, host uh, an event over in the Alumni Center during that uh, weekend so partners can come and see me ask questions, and I do try to recruit new volunteers to our program that weekend as well. The spring training opportunity, if you are interested, uh, it is a good idea to email me directly. It's held in April, and this is a two-day training opportunity to come here to CGA and learn more about the Academy Missions Partner Program, uh, network a little bit with other volunteers, uh, learn all things, the latest and greatest of the volunteer program, and we'll equip you so that you can go out confidently, work with students, work with schools, um, and do the best you can for our volunteer program in admissions. The Management and Advisory Board for our admissions uh, partner program, which consists of about eight members, does visit the Academy periodically and also virtually through webinars and conference calls. Uh, and they provide guidance to our office and assist us with projects for the uh, volunteer program um, and a, keep a strategic outlook for our, uh, the future of our program as well. And then, of course, virtual visits and webinars such as this are always available uh, for volunteers to access online through YouTube. Um, they can attend live like you are today um, or see the virtual experiences on our website at uscga.edu. And that's all I have today, uh, wrapping it up nice and early, leaving plenty of time for any questions and answers here at the end. I'm happy to talk about anything that may be on people's uh, minds. We do have uh, some of our volunteers online with us today. So if you would like to participate, please use the little thought bubble in the lower left-hand corner of your screen to access the instant messaging feature. Um, I'll take questions regarding uh, campus programs, but also regarding the application, uh, the application selection deadlines, anything related to uh, Coast Guard Academy missions, I'm happy to address for you today. So uh, I'll open it up for any questions at this time. I appreciate you all being here today. And uh, if there are no questions at the end of this uh, brief uh, section of our webinar today, what I'll ask is once we log off, um, I will be posting this online, but I ask that uh, I always get uh, feedback on how we, these presentations are going um, and recommendations for future presentations as well. We want to make these worth the time of our volunteers uh, so that they get the best information available as quickly as available. Thank you, David. So seeing and hearing no questions at this time, um, I again want to thank everybody for logging in. And um, I see a couple more people are typing at the moment. So if there are any questions that pop up before we sign off, I'll make sure to answer those. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, please go out, spread the good word about our campus programs. If you are a student or parent or family member also watching this video, um, please take advantage of these uh, opportunities to come to the Coast Guard Academy. It is a great way to, uh, to show commitment to the Coast Guard Academy application, um, dedication to an experience here that will last four years, plus a five-year commitment after graduating and then beyond into a potential 30-year career. Uh, so put the research in, put the time in, uh, come to the Coast Guard Academy. We can absolutely help uh, if there are needs for financial assistance. Um, always take advantage of that. And uh, before we log off today, I do want to answer one question here from Ms. Patty Coombe. Is there anything online directing educators to the opportunity at the summit? 
We do. We have um, information on our Academy website under the admissions tab that does direct uh, educators and influencers to that spring workshop. However, if you are interested in more information, you can always email admissions at uscga.edu uh, to find out more about the uh, spring workshop or to uh, submit your information to be invited to attend. So thank you again. I greatly appreciate everyone's involvement today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, go Bears.